Perspectives in the Post-Foundation Period of the Focolare Movement. Monsignor Matteo Bicioli, Under Secretary in the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith. What challenges does a movement in the Church face in the post-foundation period? I would like to distinguish between the charism of the founder and the charism of the foundation. It is not a play on words. A charism is a gift. It is a gift of the Spirit, and it is a gift always given to a person, to a reality, but clearly, as the Gospel teaches us, never to be kept for oneself, but always to be shared. And the founder undoubtedly has his or her own charism, but the foundation, which is born from the intuition, from the prophecy of the founder, has its own charism. When the founder ends his or her service, their personal charism also ends. What remains? What remains is a charism of the foundation entrusted to all those who belong to a particular association or movement, and indeed it is entrusted to the whole church. A charism of a movement is not the prerogative of the movement alone, but of the whole church. It is a plant that is living, that is growing, and that generates fruit above all after many years. There are challenges today that a founder probably never imagined, because holiness does not necessarily mean foresight, a prophecy able to see the future. So the challenges of today need to be addressed not with an old charism, but with a new charism that is renewed and trusted to everyone. How can we remain faithful to the charism, knowing we are fragile containers? Penso spesso alle parole di un grande saggio che dice. Often I think of the words of a great sage who said, "Evil can pluck off the flowers from the garden of the church." but it will never be able to stop the springtime. These words give me a lot of confidence, a lot of courage to say that it is true that today we are witnessing dramatic, perhaps incredible situations which give great scandal. And this leads us to the temptation of saying it was better in the past, it was better when all these things did not happen. But this is a wrong conclusion. What is the best time in the history of the Church in which I would like to live? In the end, I concluded that the best time in the history of the Church is the one we are living in, because it is the time in which the Lord has asked us to be His disciples, to live as His witnesses, and enter into the difficulties of the present time without fleeing, being tempted to run away or taking refuge in certain niches of spirituality. Can new charisms learn from the older charisms? I believe that a good approach is to consider charism. The Pope reminded the Focolare movement in February 2021 not as a museum piece, but as a living reality. The great challenge today is to make the charism live and evolve without this giving us the feeling of having betrayed it. Because at the end of the day, when we allow the charism to evolve, there is always a part of us, or perhaps even outside of us, that says to us, you're a traitor, because the person who founded mounted this, had this direction, had this ideal, and today you're choosing other paths. So I believe that the movements, the long-established religious institutes that have been able to update the charism to the present day, adapting it to our times, to the challenges that this world present, are a great stimulus for us too to be able to update our charisms, never alone. This is the strength of being a movement, the strength of being an association, the strength of being church is this, never alone. The updating of a charism in its development, its growth, never happens through the intuition of one person alone. Intuition does lead to foundation, yes, but development, growth, always takes place in a shared reality, even accepting that someone may say to us, you have betrayed the original charism. It could also serve as a stimulus for a verification and examination of conscience.